An event on a mountain turns into tragedy as a devastating fire kills four people. The commander of the U.S. forces, Korea, said the U.S. and South Korean forces are prepared for all possible situations. And Korean makers of digital TVs and cell phones are dominating the American market. Hello and welcome to News Today on KBS World. It's Tuesday the 10th of February. I'm Nemo Kim. An event marking the first full moon of the lunar year on a mountain in the southeastern region of Korea has turned into a tragedy. A devastating fire has killed four people and left dozens injured. As many as 30,000 people gathered Monday evening for the triennial Pampas grass burning event to mark the first full moon of the lunar year. But the fire went out of control, shooting flames up to 70 meters in the air and spreading to nearby spectators. Police say 360 safety personnel, including civil employees and policemen, were at the scene. But that number was not nearly enough to prevent an emergency. The event itself is also under fire. Critics have long warned of the risk of an accident because the fire is set on the pompous grass field on the mountaintop after sunset. The event has seen a number of mishaps, yet organizers in Changnyeong County remained negligent over safety. The county put up fire break lines of between 30 and 50 meters between the venue and tourists, but sudden winds carried fire over the lines and toward spectators. 붙이자마자 이제 바람이 강풍이 계속 불어 불어서 이제 배바이라는 쪽으로 불길이 계속 타고 올라오니까 그쪽에 이제 사람 사람들이 이제 허둥지둥 하다가 The organizers apparently failed to consider that the pampas grass was very dry due to a recent drought and that strong winds could easily spread the fire. 뭐 전압 장비는 다 가지고 왔지만은 불이 워낙 갑자기 지금 확산 되다 보니까 불이 지나가 불가능한 거죠. A probe launched into the county government will determine if the organizers took the proper safety precautions. The commander of the U.S. forces Korea said the U.S. and South Korean forces are prepared for all possible situations on the Korean Peninsula. We have more on what he said. What plans are made concerning the peninsula's potential all-out attack from the north and the nation's instability? We can't give you the details, but we're prepared for the full range of operations. Commander of U.S. Forces in Korea, Walter Sharp, held a briefing with foreign press. Sharp said all preparations were complete for natural calamities, humanitarian crises, civil war and potential loose nuclear weapons. Those plans are agreed to by both the, and worked very closely and hard together between the ROC chairman, General Kim, and his staff and me and my staff for both of those. This likely means the so-called Con Plan 5029 that Seoul and Washington had been discussing regarding the unstable North Korean conditions is complete. The commander said South Korea could not avoid partial destruction, but he stressed excellent radar position and precise targeting ability in case of North Korean artillery attacks. We'll be able to do it fairly quickly, but because of their location uh, and the number of people in Seoul, the, there will be destruction here. As so, the commander said the U.S. forces in Korea will maintain its current scale of around 28,000 soldiers and continue joint operations with the South Korean military to minimize potential destruction. Korean makers of digital TVs and cell phones are dominating the American market. They've overtaken their competitors in performance, design and marketing. Korean electronics makers have overtaken Japanese competitors to dominate the American digital TV market, the most competitive in the world. Samsung Electronics has retained its U.S. market lead for the third straight year with 26%. LG Electronics has also showed a big surge. The two Korean companies control nearly 33% of the American market. Japan's big three, Sony, Toshiba, and Panasonic, own a combined 29% of the U.S. market. Korean mobile phones also take up almost 43% of the American market. 
Samsung has taken the top spot for the first time in 11 years with a market share of 22 percent. Former leader Motorola is in second place. LG has overtaken research in motion of Canada and Nokia of Finland. The Korean company is just behind Motorola in third with a market share of nearly 21 percent. The U.S. market is the world's largest for information technology and telecommunications, so performing well there is crucial for Korean companies. Korea's exported kimchi to Russia since 2006, and the amount is increasing thanks to the growing popularity of the Korean staple. Many Russians have developed their own way of enjoying kimchi. Let's take a look. Around 2,000 companies from some 60 countries are participating in the Food Expo held in Moscow, where kimchi making demonstration is taking place. Lettuce pickled in salt water is seasoned with spices. Russians swarm at the food stall, serving slices of bread with kimchi made of lettuce and cucumber. Korea began exporting kimchi to Russia in 2006. The amount has increased to around 230 tons last year. Russia is the fourth largest importer of Korean produce and food, following Japan, the U.S., and China. The Korea Agro Fisheries Trade Corporation has planned to export kimchi worth $380 million to Russia this year. Last year, kimchi worth $280 million was shipped to the country. Korean food and produce will continue to advance into Russian market through strategic localization. Secret letters written by the reformist King Jongjo of the late Joseon dynasty have been unveiled. The letters give us a glimpse into the king's personal concerns and emotions. It's a shame that he's such a wretch. King Jongjo denounces the character of one of his officials, suggesting he was hot-tempered. The king sometimes used Korean instead of Chinese letters. The leader of a conservative faction, Shim Hwanji, is known to have been King Jongjo's political foe. But nearly 300 letters exchanged between the king and Shim shed doubt over whether the king was poisoned to death, as widely believed. The letters show that they were political partners discussing policies rather than foes. How are you? I haven't heard from you in a while. In the last letter sent to Shim before his death, the king talked of his personal concerns. King Jongjo ordered Shim to get rid of his letters, but Shim kept and even dated them. These rare personal letters of King Jongjo are expected to help the study of royal correspondence, papermaking techniques, and seals. With spring nearing, migratory birds that spent the winter in Korea are starting to leave for Siberia. Birds that stayed at Chunam Reservoir in Changwon in Korea's South Gyeongsang province are preparing for their journey back. A group of taiga bean goose flocks into the Chunam Reservoir. They start hunting for food right away. They're already plump, but they need to prepare themselves for the 3,000-kilometer journey back home to Siberia. Dark green-headed teals and yellow-beaked mallards are also busy searching for food. The white-naped crane also swoops in for lunch. The crane gracefully strolls in the warm sunlight, but soon wrangles with the lapwing over prey. The reservoir crowded with plump winter birds is an outstanding hunting spot for birds. 
Geese and ducks are alarmed at the sight of the white-tailed eagle. Bird watchers don't want to miss a shot and ceaselessly press their shutters. Around 100,000 birds migrated to the reservoir for the winter. They're going back to Siberia to breed and will return in October. Korean figure skating sensation Kim Yeon Ah has performed in the gala show at the Four Continents Figure Skating Championships in Vancouver. She's again impressed her audiences with her vivid expression of emotions. Let's take a look at the performance. From the Republic of Korea, please welcome Yuna Kim. Kim Yeon Ah skates to a roar of cheers from spectators. She stands out among the group of skaters that performed at the exhibition gala. Kim showed off her elegance in pulling off techniques like an inner bower and spin. Her emotional performance reached a climax to music. Kim was the only female skater to receive prize of encore after the show. Spectators gave her a burst of applause as Kim skated to Camille saint Saens' Dance Macabre. She had set a world record in the short program at the Four Continents Championships. Kim will head for Toronto to begin training for the World Figure Skating Championships next month in Los Angeles. Bigger things are expected of Kim in the World Championships in Los Angeles. An independent film about a long friendship between an old man and his aged ox has drawn more than 260,000. Posting the highest number of moviegoers for an independent film in Korea, the documentary Old Partner has opened a new chapter in Korea's independent film history. Film Old Partner is about a long and profound partnership between an old farmer and his ox. It cost only about $72,000 to make the documentary film. But word of mouth reviews helped the film draw more than 260,000 viewers by last weekend. The documentary touches people's hearts with his frank looks at life. Old partner easily outperformed once the former highest-grossing independent film from Ireland that attracted 220,000 audiences two years ago. It was overseas film industries that initially recognized the potential of Korean independent films. Earlier this year, Old Partner entered the World Documentary Competition of the Sundance Film Festival in the U.S. Recent release, Daytime Drinking and Breathless won awards at reputed European film festivals. Old Partner has changed the status of independent films in theaters, leaving a deep impression in people's heart. Ramyun is the most well-known and beloved fast food in Korea, but lately it's been getting a bad name as a junk food. But Ramyun is evolving. Handmade Ramyun dishes with fresh ingredients are attracting today's health-conscious people. This is a handmade Ramyun restaurant in Seoul. Diners have to first buy tickets outside to get service. <laughs> This is no ordinary instant ramen. The noodles are prepared at the restaurant every day. Its yellow color comes from turmeric, a key ingredient in curry. The curly noodles are steamed first. Ramen 
and then they're put into molds and fried. And out comes the ramen that you're familiar with. Beets, squid ink and spinach make these noodles not only colourful but also very nutritious. The broth is made by simmering a vat full of radish, kelp, shrimps, clams, oysters and mussels for a long time. Some more seafood on top is put in to make a bowl of spicy seafood ramen. This ramyun with beef bone broth is known for its deep, rich flavor. Korean men who served in the military must have fond memories of cooking ramyun in a steel canteen. There is the so-called wash basin ramyun in which five pouches of ramyun are cooked in one big pot. Sharing it with your friends is what makes this ramyun very fun to eat. So how about these ramyun dishes? Fried pork cutlet ramyun and stir-fried beef and curry ramyun are fresh changes to your ordinary ramyun. There are also spicy ramyun with pollock roe and steaming dried pollock ramyun with assorted vegetables and hot green pepper. They're great cures for hangovers. But the most popular one is the so-called tear gas ramyun. Its spiciness ranges from level 1 through 4, depending on the amount of hot red pepper powder. Some diners have come from far to face the challenge. Here is a way to enjoy more healthy ramen at home. First, rinse the cooked noodles in cold water to wash off the fat. Slice eggs, meat, cucumbers and carrots and arrange them on a plate. Make some mustard sauce by mixing mustard powder, water, sugar and vinegar. Then, sprinkle the sauce over the ramen and vegetables to enjoy a low-fat delicious dish. Ramen can be transformed into a tasty and nutritious meal if you use your imagination. And time now for a look at today's economic indicators followed by world weather. And that does it for this edition of News Today. Join me tomorrow at the same time. Have a gorgeous day.